Hello, it's Alexis. I am just jumping on here. I didn't prepare you for this. I didn't even prepare myself for this. You can see I'm not even wearing makeup. I'm just jumping on because I'm inspired and I have an idea. Let me get to the group. Okay, here we are so I can see um, if anybody has any comments. So here's what I wanna say. Today this came up in a mastermind and it's something I've been working on for a couple months. Whoops. Um, so a lot of us, we go to make a big change, very exciting, and then we do things that we use to prove why we're not actually getting anywhere. So super simple example, we feel really great, we're really expanded, we're making more money, we're reaching out to people, maybe we're just showing up differently or we're making new offers, and then we stay up late drinking, we stop going to the gym, we stop meditating, you have coffee, we eat dairy or gluten, you know, whatever it is in your life, and then we wake up and we're like, there I go again. There I go, proving that I'm my worst enemy, always making myself feel bad. You know, I can't, what, I just don't want to feel good. I just immediately overeat. I immediately binge on sugar. I immediately have <laughs> Easter candy. Um, you know, and then we use it against ourselves. We, we use it as proof that we're never going to get there. Because how could we? We keep sabotaging ourselves. How could we ever move beyond this place, this position? And I just want to say, like, that's just a story we're telling ourselves. So I have this a lot. I have this a lot because in my ideal life, when I live by myself and I have no boyfriend and nothing going on, you know, the two or the years I spent on a mountain in New Zealand or months I spent up there, no dairy, no sugar, no caffeine, no alcohol. Like, it's a pure diet. I meditate for hour a day. Like, it is a great life, and I feel really good. And then there's this life where I do have a boyfriend, and my schedule changes, and we go out to dinner, and, you know, we have a drink. And, like, this is not who I necessarily view myself as. And so for months when I started dating, I would beat myself up and be like, oh, what are you doing? You're just doing these things to fit in. And this means you're never going to succeed and you're never going to be able to be your good self and blah, 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 blah. Like it doesn't matter. Insert whatever you do because we all do it. Right. And what I had to let go of was the story I was telling myself about those things. Who cares? You have a cup of coffee, get over it. It doesn't mean that you're out to sabotage yourself. It doesn't mean you're a failure in life. It doesn't mean that you're never going to be able to have self-discipline and you're never going to fit in with the crowd that you want to fit in with. Like, it just doesn't mean that. It means you had a cup of coffee, period, end of story. And so a really beautiful yoga practice about clearing your karma where we take the emotional imprint of every experience and we clear the emotion out because every experience is neutral in and of itself. And it's the emotional imprint that we create from the experience that actually creates our karma. Because then every time we go to take an action, we're having to like sift through this murky, muddy water of emotional imprints. We're like, get me to the other side. And then by the time we come out, we can't even remember what the neutral experience was because we're just reacting through all this mud of our own emotion, the mud of our own um, history and experience. And that sucks, right? But it's the same thing with this. A neutral experience, an experience of having alcohol, staying up late, not emailing that person that you said you were going to email, um, showing up late, having gluten, like whatever it is for you, that experience just is what it is. It doesn't have to mean what you're using it to mean about you and your potential, your success, your worth as a human being. It just doesn't. It just doesn't. So let it go. Drop the story. Drop the story and what that does, and this is why it's so key and so important, and I'm just flipping back and forth to Facebook to see if anybody put a comment. Um, what that does is it frees you to take action because many of us, particularly if you run a business, but you know, it doesn't matter if you just have like a big project at work, we can do this too. Many of us have things on our to-do list that we're procrastinating and we're procrastinating because of who we think we need to be to do them and who we're not right now, or who we think it's going to ask us to be if we do it. So like, I have to reach out to um, a nine figure earner. And I'm like, well, who am I to talk to a nine figure earner? I don't earn nine figures. Right. That's a story I'm telling myself about an action, writing an email, write the email, drop the story. Or 
say like you wanted to pitch this new place because you want to write an article for them. And we're like, oh, I don't know if I have a big enough following and I don't know if they're going to like me. I should probably go and binge on some cookies to see, you know, and then see how I feel. <laughs> like, And then we binge on cookies and we're like, oh, well, now I feel terrible. And look, I'm clearly not worthy of being in the Huffington Post. So I guess I just should email them tomorrow. Drop the story. It's just an email. It's just an email. And the beautiful thing of this is that it frees you up to take action because action itself is neutral. Just show up and do the work. Just show up and do the work. But when we have stories that we're telling ourselves about the work, about how we're not worthy of the work, we're not worthy of the outcome of the work, we're not sure we're capable of the work, we're not sure that we really should get the outcome of the work, we're not sure we want to not get the outcome of the work because what if we're rejected? Um, you know, what about who this is asking me to be? Then we just gunk everything up and we stop ourselves from taking action. Another just amazing member of a mastermind group today said, um, well, I, I don't, I don't want my business to take off because I've got this other thing going and, and I don't want to have to lose my life. Like I don't want two full-time jobs. Think that through. I don't want my business to take off because I'm going to be too busy. Big fear. A lot of us have that fear, particularly if you have other things that you love going on in your life. But that's a story we're telling ourselves. We're telling ourselves that in this future imaginary world where we're like amazingly successful, that we don't know how to balance anything and we don't have a team. We don't have to anybody to delegate to. We um, don't know how to manage our own stress. It's not going to be any fun. It's going to be miserable. You know, so many assumptions are in there. And so we stop from taking action because we're like, I don't know if I want that outcome. Drop it. Drop it like it's hot. These stories are hot. Drop them. Drop them. That's all I got to say. Just drop the story. Drop the story. It's just not worth that. And it doesn't matter what it is. Like tomorrow, if you wake up and instead of going to the gym, which you've gone to every day for 25 years in a row, you sleep in. And you're like, oh my God, what does this mean about who I am? And does this mean I'm never going to go to the gym again? Does it mean that I'm not who I think I am? Does it mean that I'm not like exercise me? Like just who cares? Let it go. It doesn't matter. You didn't go to the gym. It just is what it is. I know this is scary because this is actually asking us to do a lot more than what it sounds like, right? It's asking us to live in a space of non-definition where instead of defining ourselves by roles and um, habits and chosen personas, it's asking us to live in a very murky space that doesn't have definition. And if you don't have definition, then you don't know how to interact with things, right? That's, that's how we feel about people. Or like if you watch a show or you read a book and you can't really get a feel for a character, you're like, I don't know if I like the show or not. I just don't know. And that I don't know space it's hard to know what to do. And so when we ask ourselves to remove these definitions that we've put on ourselves, good, bad, um, success, failure, rejected, accepted, like when we let those ways that we're holding ourselves together in a negative way go, what is there holding us together, right? That can be a really scary place because now everything just doesn't feel it just is. We're just going through it. And things feel good. We don't have to overthink. We don't have to overassess. There's, there's just like this neutral field of existence. And we're present in it. And we're responding to it. But it doesn't feel bad. And that can be really scary. It can be really scary to be that present, that in the moment, and that without self-definition. Because what if you're asked to do something totally out in left field and you never even considered it? What if you're invited by life to show up in a way that you never really thought yourself going down? What about those parameters that you had to say why you couldn't and you shouldn't and you can't and you won't? You know, without those things, how do you make decisions? How do you trust yourself? How do you move forward? And, and I want to say with good feelings, right? When we're in that space, instead of having to navigate by blaming ourselves, shaming ourselves, feeling guilty about things that we shouldn't have done or couldn't do or won't do, like all of those bad feelings, we stay in that neutral space and we navigate by what feels exciting, what feels good, 
what feels like the natural extension of the place that you're in right now, instead of constantly swinging back and forth between the future and the past. Oh, I should be like this. I can imagine it. I can feel it. I could be a bajillionaire if I just let myself, but oh, I ate a bunch of cookies, so I'm a horrible person and I'm not there yet. That's swinging between the future and the past and it doesn't feel good. It's holding ourselves in like a really painful place of not having and then blaming ourselves for not having, right? Whereas when we drop the story, we just are. We just are. We have ideas. We have inspirations. We do them without the story about you and who you are and what it means. And then we're in the moment and we're really showing up for life and we're showing up fully for ourselves. So I get that, like, I started this saying, okay, you know, it's kind of funny, drop the story. This is ridiculous. But I understand that it's asking more of you. It's not, this, it's not as simple as we think. It's a brave action. It's a brave action to move beyond who you think you need to be, including how you think you need to punish yourself, you know, for all the things you've done wrong. It's a really brave choice. It's a very courageous choice to say, I don't have to hold myself back. I don't have to be the one punishing myself. I don't have to judge myself for drinking wine. I don't have to judge myself for sleeping in. I don't have to judge myself for anything because you don't. It's just a story. It doesn't mean you can't learn, right? If something doesn't feel good, like, oh, that's out of alignment. Maybe I don't want to do that. But it's a want. It's a moving towards what you want not punishing yourself to stop what you want because you think that you need to be a different way. We're not, we're not cajoling and shaping ourselves into a perfect person. We're whittling away all the stuff that doesn't align. And the stories that we're using to make ourselves feel bad don't align. So we got to whittle them off. And then maybe we whittle off the actions that don't go with it because at that point, the actions don't have charge for us. There's no charge in drinking or not drinking. There's no charge in coffee or no coffee because it doesn't say anything about you as an individual and your worth. It's just a choice. And when you're in that space, you can make that choice really clearly and cleanly because it doesn't mean anything. It just is. So sometimes you choose it, sometimes you don't. Who cares? You move on. You forget about it. I hope that's really helpful. I would love to hear how this is impacting you how this is um, settling in with you. I know this is a big concept. End, end of the story, tying it all together. Try dropping the story. Try noticing when you do it. Try dropping the story. I want to hear back. I want to hear back about how this works for you. And move into being in that moment. This allows you to be in the moment and expand with what comes. But we got to drop the story. And that's a brave, brave choice. So honor yourself for how courageous this is. Really, truly, I mean it. If you're even listening to this and you understand what I'm saying, you are in a small segment of people who are doing work that most people don't want to do. And if that's you, honor it. Really honor it. This is big. This is big, big stuff. This is moving past our karmic imprint, right? This is moving or moving past our karma. This is moving into a space where we truly get to be in the flow with life and creating and expanding to our full potential and taking ownership of our life without punishing ourselves for it. It's, it's incredible. And it takes a lot of courage to drop your self-definition and to drop who you think you need to be in order to be who you are in each moment. It takes courage. You're brave. Got them back. All right. Mwah. Talk to you soon.